when building an interpretation of a geological map, especially one you've not created yourself. It's useful to gain a qualitative overview before becoming obsessed with too much detail or precision. We can illustrate the approach using an example here from northern Scotland in the Moyne Thrust Belt. It's this shaded area here on the south side of Loch Lane Cool, the water body running through the middle of the image. Here it is. So I want to try and get an overview of the structure that we can see on the map. We're going to do this by building two distinct products. One is a summary sketch map, the other is a sketch cross section. The reason we want to generate these is to gain a qualitative understanding of where the boundaries are, what their rough orientations are, how they relate to one another, and we can then use that cross section to build more precise versions once we have that qualitative understanding. Building a sketch map is really useful for exploring the geology and gaining understanding by asking questions of where boundaries go and how they interact through topography. So we're going to start by drawing a sketch map through this countryside here on some separate paper. So we'll start by gridding it out. We've got about, what's that, about two kilometres by three kilometres. So draw that like this. That's about through here. That'll do. There's a box to say that's the area. And onto this we can put some grid lines just so we know what we are. We've got that one there, that one there. That one there, one through here, and one through there. Next, we can put this coastline in here. That's the very corner of Loch Lane Cool. So we can draw that in something like that. There's that bit of loch. We can put this loch down here, which sort of sits something like that. as our two water bodies. And there's a stream that comes out from here, wanders across and out like that. It branches, there's a Nepal bottom that comes in from that side. So these are the rivers, I'll just make sure we know what we're doing. Going cool, loch. Right. Now we want to try and understand the topography in here a little bit. So I can see up here there's some high ground, it goes all the way up to almost 600 metres, 593, that's obviously sea level. And there's a ridge line coming down here, we can tell from these contour loops, coming down sort of through here like this. It goes through this ground we've coloured in light blue and out to here. So there's a ridge through there that comes through. I'll just leave the pencil like that. Pick up another one as a pointer. And I can see that the ground falls steeply away down here, a bit more gently from the contour spacing down to the sea. There's an escarpment here, isn't there? You can see these contours are quite closely spaced. Let's move that out of the way. See this escarpment continues, these closely spaced topographic contours through here, relatively gentle ground on the ridge top, falling away towards the road, falling through that gorge, that's quite a steep gorge where the contours come together, a bit more steep ground through here. So these rocks are actually lying on an escarpment that runs all the way down, well from here, just above the road on here, and around this corner, and then down towards the east, where it comes down to the side of the loch. And there's another escarpment we just picked out, this one here where the ground falls away, that comes around through here, a bit indistinct in this area. But if we were to draw a section through the topographic profile, it would come flat, climbs relatively steeply, relatively gentle, steeply, and up onto the high ground in here. So it looks like the geology relates to some of the topographic features in this. So when we draw the geology on, we'll just check that as we go. Right, now let's start looking then. We'll do this very systematically. I can see down here we've got the Lewisian in red. These are the quartz sites. So it's quartz sites, being the key, base quartz site, low quartz site in other words, and pipe rock form this ridge line or this escarpment line through here. So let's just draw that on. It's going to come out from here, potter around through this sort of position. Down like that, it comes across here. The detail doesn't matter really. I'm just sort of showing how it sweeps across the map and out. So that is the unconformity. We know that's the unconformity between the Cambrian strata here and the Precambrian the Precambrian strata on this side. As we start down in here, that contact is Cambrian on Lewisian, but here it's 
Cambrian on Torrid Onion. And if we look carefully, we can see that contact change happens here, where we go from Lewisian to Torrid Onion. So in this position here, the contact comes around and we've got Torrid Onion, Lewisian, and lower or basal quartzite, which forms through there. Well, at this stage, I'm not going to pick the difference between the lower quartzite and the pipe rock. It's just I will notice that they, these strike symbols are essentially the same through here for both units. If we go to adjacent sides of a contact between pipe rock and lower quartzite, the trend of the strike is the same. So let's just work on the basis. These are probably conformable for now. So I'm just going to go towards the far side of the pipe rock over here. And there's a boundary that runs down to the water's edge, comes up the hill, around, comes down and comes down towards the lock here. So let's just draw that on. Let's be fairly careful on this. It just comes more or less across that grid line, out through that, wheels around a bit and then comes down to the water's edge. So all of this are the quartzite to pipe rock, pipe rock rock, the quartzite pipe rock over here. So we've got a zone through there which consists of these two rocks, low quartzite and pipe rock. Now, I can see this is a bit complicated. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute. I'm now going to go up to here. I can see in this position we've got Louisian sitting on top of these units, higher on the hillside, sitting high on the hillside. The quartzites we've just been thinking about are low this complicated material is between the two. So let's just draw in the contact here, which puts Lewisian onto these underlying Cambrian strata. Okay, so it doesn't quite come down to the water's edge, but it's gonna come wandering through here, wibbling around like this. Comes around here, like Koravec, and then down here. Looks like it comes down to the water's edge just here. So we've got a contact that runs from this lock all the way down around this little lock and down almost to sea level. So this is Lewisian sitting on top of these units so presumably it's thrust so I'll just mark that with the thrust contact like this. Right now we need to look at this ground between the two. We've almost got this sorted haven't we? Just this little tract through here that we've not considered yet. Well, I can see down in here, they're brown and yellow rocks and they're a bit stripy. And I'm not going to get into the detail, but presumably these are imbricates or these intersliced pieces of fucoi bed and uh, saltarella. But this, this, this isn't, this is blue. So this is quartzites. And if you look carefully, you can just see there are two types. We won't break those out again, but let's draw this on to start with. It's just here. So what happens? Does it keep going as we come down here? No. It stops there because by the time we're down in this position we've got Lewisian directly on top of the fucoid saltarella so this piece must pinch out more or less just across that line there what about this way oh, well the interpretation takes us to the lock so we've got a separate piece this is quartzites of some sort PR and LQ in here and I'll just shade that so we know what that is Presumably it's a thrust slice because it's sitting quartzites on top of fucoid bed saltarella, so that's older rocks here on top of younger rocks. Well, I'm just going to leave, leave this and call this imbricated fucoid beds and saltarella grit. So that's our sketch map. That's north. That is one kilometre. We could colour it in, but let's just, well, actually, no, let's just label up. That's two, four, two, five, two, six grid lines. That's 30 and 29. So there's our working sketch map. We haven't mapped this ground, but most of the other things are actually um, decided upon. Right, so now we're going to use this information to draw a cross section. So I'm not gonna move everything along. Let's take this up, move this along. So we've got a bit more paper to play with down here. We'll refer to this map from time to time, but basically we'll refer mostly to this sketch map. So 
Where should we draw our cross section? Well, we want to incorporate as much of, of this geology as we can, all the as many units as we can. So we want to get somewhere where we get both the Lewisian and Torridonian in, so somewhere through here. These quartzites, some imbricated fucoid beds and saltarella, this slicing up in here. So obviously a good direction is somewhere through here. And let's be a bit more precise about it. If we look at the trend of the strike bars in here, in the quartzites, they're running like this. So a good direction to draw a cross section is like this, perpendicular to the strike in the quartzites, the main unit that runs through. So we're going to draw our cross section through here. Okay. A, B. So let's set this up. That's about, what, one and a half kilometers through here. Well, I actually want to extend it a bit over this way. So let's say that's one, two kilometers as a horizontal scale. I'm going to draw the section down here. Okay, I'm going to quickly go through this. We've done quite a lot of um, topographic sketching. So let's just work through this quickly. We're at about 150 meters here. The geology then climbs an escarpment through here, through the landscape represented by different rock types up through the quartzites into about 250 meters through here. A little escarpment up through this little lock here and then onto the very high ground. So we've got a flattish bit of ground, a steeper bit of ground, a flatter bit of ground, and then it climbing up again. And we'll tie that into our profile, like this. Right, so 150 climbs along, climbs up section like this, goes roller coastering along. We've got another little piece that comes up there and up, keep going up. That's roughly our topographic profile from this 150 meters above sea level through to a plateau area here about 250 and then up to 300 and 500 again at the end. Right, now let's look a bit more carefully. In here, I can see the dips in this ground. Oh, what are those? 12, 14, something like that, 10, 13, 10, 14, 12. So quite a lot of dips in here. So those are, as we saw on the shore of Loch Assin, they're quite you know, gently dipping, but systematically dipping this way towards the east southeast. So we're going to take that information and use it to draw the unconformity at the base of the quartzite, so maybe some quartzite information through here. So we said that the, the escarpment is quartzite, so the boundary goes here and comes down something like that at about 10 degrees. I'm not being too precise, don't mind, it's just dipping this way. That's quartzite, lower quartzite. These are the older rocks, younger stuff on top. And we say that the other units in here are also dipping in this direction. Just add some color quickly, just so we know what we're doing. So this is the lower quartzite coming in, just using the color to bring out the bedding orientation a little bit, coming down like this. And we know it comes all the way down to the lost side, because we see it here, down at the side of Loch Lincoln at sea level. So it continues all the way down to sea level. And presumably we've got presumably beyond. Now let's look at the map again. Down at sea level, the unconformity is against Lewisian. So down at sea level, the unconformity is against Lewisian. But here, along our line of section at 150 meters above sea level, we've got Torridonian rocks between the Lewisian and the quartzites. So just in here, we've got some Torridonian before we go to Lewisian at the start of the section line over here. Right then, so let's think about that. So we've got some geology in here that doesn't continue down to the sea. And if we were to walk the boundary out, we can see that the Torridonian Lewisian boundary comes down and abuts the unconformity. So the Torridonian Lewisian boundary comes down and abuts the unconformity. So that point there, which I'll label X, on the map is here x on the profile I'll just color that in so we're explicit about that there's our torridonian rocks making a little sort of triangular wedge stopping in the subsurface underlain by lewisian here so this geometry is compatible between cross section 
and map. Next, let's put the top of this package of rocks, the top of the pipe rock, in. It's this boundary here, this one here on our sketch map. And I can see the tips in there. Strike is the same as down here. The tips are quite low as well. So I think that this boundary in here is parallel to the baseline conformity. In other words, this is just an undeformed dip panel, low quartzite and pipe rock. So let's put that on. It comes in at about halfway across this flat ground along our profile. In other words, it comes in about there. Let's pop it on. So let's say that about here, about a little way across this flat ground, is where the top of the pipe rock comes in. I've drawn that very well, actually. Let's play that out a bit. It should be parallel to the base in here. So just bring this out. So that would be pipe rock coming down through there like that. Colour that in. And do that a better job. Hide that little graphic error. Like that. And the contact somewhere in here. So that's pipe rock going down. There is our base of quartzite, or lower quartzite synonym coming down through there. So that's just dipping like that. So there's a couple of things we can do next. We can either put in the thrust that carries the, the Louisian or this thrust here. Well, I'm actually going to do both because I'm going to say that this thrust joins this thrust. So we're going to look at the top of this package of material coming around here that caps the Fucoid bed sorterella. Where is that? Let's just tie it to the topography a bit. It's actually here at the edge of this flat ground, really really coastering around it. It's going to go down the hill towards sea level. Where's that finish at? It looks about 50 meters, maybe 70 meters above sea level. So it finishes down here about 70, something like that. And it's going to come along something like that to there. So that is our contact. That is this contact here, here putting quartzite onto our fucoid beds and saltarella, down here putting Louisian against fucoid beds and saltarella. So let's take that, put it onto our map. There is the Louisian here against fucoid beds and saltarella. I'm just going to put quartzites on in this one colour in here. Here are the quartzites against the fucoid bed saltarella, the unornamented, uncoloured piece in our cross section. So we've got one of these wedge problems like we had in the Torridonium, just like we went along this quartzite unconformity and went from Louisian at sea level to Torridonian up high. As we go along this thrust contact, we get changed from Louisian to quartzite with imbricated fucoid bed and saltarella underneath. So how do these relate? Let's look at the sketch map and you can see this slice of quartzite pinches out against the upper thrust. So there's a point here, which I'll just label Y on the map that we have to put onto our cross section. The Louisian lies on top of the quartzites here. So there's a little piece here where there's Louisian. So therefore, Really, the only option is to say that this comes in like that. So there is our point Y. Louisian on top. In here, like that. And some quartzites in here that wedged back down dip in the subsurface, somewhere beneath here, equivalent to point Y on our profile. Finally, what are we going to do about the imbricated sal uh, saltarella grit and fucoid beds? Well, the easiest thing is just to just sketch these in for now and say that there's a lot of thrust slices in here that take saltarella grit, fucoid beds. We can just cartoon them in, how they, how they work, we don't really know yet. We haven't really confronted that problem. But there is a package in here. Let's just add some colour. And these are going to be schematically added on. Fucoid bed, Santorella. Just like that. I'll label this as imbricated 
bucoy bed and saltarella grit. And there's a slice of quartzite. There's the Louisian in here. Presumably this is the Glen Cool thrust like we saw when we did the airlock exercise. That's an unconformity. It's the sub Cambrian unconformity. This is the sub Torridonian unconformity. And there we have it. We've got a working game here that shows our sketch cross section. It's got a scale. We haven't put the orientation on. That's west, northwest, east, south, east. Just to be clear, that would be about where B is. A is out on the Louisian, so over about here, that's A. And we've got our working geology for the area, a sketch map and a cross section.